Hey guys, I've always wanted to do a competition brisket, but I've never competed and you know, I wanna learn how to do it. So I'm gonna call somebody who knows how to do competition briskets and see if he can help me out. Oh, phone's ringing. Oh, hey, hey, hey. how's it going, man? <laughs> All right, so are you gonna be able to teach me how to do a competition brisket? Absolutely, uh, I tell you what, why don't you teach me how to do your kind of brisket and I'll show you a full pedal to the metal competition brisket. Sounds like a plan. All right, man, let's, let's do, it. do it. If you want to see Harry cook a brisket my way, then check out his channel. He's going to be posting a video on there so you can see both sides of this coin. Hey guys, I want to take a chance to thank today's sponsor. It's one of my very favorite sponsors, HelloFresh. It's the number one meal kit in America, and there's a good reason why. First of all, the food is delicious. I cook food for a living, right? I'm doing catering events, I'm cooking thousands of pounds of food. I know good food when I eat it, and this is incredibly tasty stuff. I've never made anything from HelloFresh that didn't taste great. Another reason you should consider HelloFresh is because it is so darn convenient. My wife just had a baby, and she doesn't have a ton of extra time. And it makes it so easy for her, with not a lot of time, to be able to make restaurant quality food without having to plan out going to the grocery store and what ingredients she's gonna use, it all just shows up. And finally, one of the most underrated things about HelloFresh is that everything comes pre-portioned. So if you're gonna use a tablespoon of a specific sauce, you don't have to buy a two pound container of that sauce in order to use it. My pantry is full of stuff. Most of it is because I bought it one time for one recipe and I've never used it again. That's not gonna happen with HelloFresh because it already comes in the exact right portion size. If you guys wanna take advantage of a great offer, go to hellofresh.com and use code MADSCIENTISTBBQ14 for 14 free meals plus free shipping. That's hellofresh.com, code MADSCIENTISTBBQ14 for 14 free meals plus free shipping. It's a great opportunity, make sure you check it out. Got a pot and a pan to clean now, but this beats the heck out of takeout. Totally worth it. This is great, this is one I'm gonna remember for sure. Obviously, I'm here with Harry Sue. Harry has competed in a lot of barbecue competitions. He's won a lot of trophies, and he's had a lot of success. So I thought, I need an expert to teach me how to do this. So what's the first step in getting this thing ready? Okay, the first step in uh, getting a competition brisket ready is to know how to pick one. And uh, I always recommend people follow the uh, four criteria for picking a competition okay. brisket. We always look for size, symmetry, striation, and marbling. So size is the bigger brisket. Mm -hmm. I love big briskets, I cannot lie. Right. And this is a wonderful brisket, it's about 18 pounds, so that's about perfect. You wanna look for basically symmetry. Symmetry means that the brisket looks kinda of nice and even. Okay. No, it's not too narrow, not too tall. And of course, you wanna look for marbling. And the marbling is on the side, it's called marbling. Uh, against the grain, it's called striations. So this looks like a fantastic brisket. So let's go ahead and remove it from the packaging. All right. We got this thing on the cutting board. Looks like we have a gas here. Okay. Okay. So when you cook for your family and friends in a backyard trim, the objective is yield. Right. You want to get as much brisket as you can. In competition, we're not really worried about yield. So if you flip the brisket off, I'll show you as a competitor Ooh. what I'm looking for. Okay. So if you were turning brisket slices into the judging tent, right? Mm -hmm. Would it come from about here? It will be coming right about here. Okay. Okay. So, oh, so, so you cut directly across the grain. Uh, we cut directly across the grain to create slices to go into a competition box. So we're not really concerned about the rest of the brisket. Okay. Right? And I'm going to show you how we do a competition trim to optimize the beautiful slices okay. right from why we call the money meat is, which is this area here. Okay. Okay. Cool. So we can start anywhere. We can start on this side. First thing you want to do is remove all of the silver skin, remove all of the fascia from okay. this side. So go ahead and start cleaning it up a little bit. Okay. And uh, one simple way to do that is if you put your hand underneath and bow it, it makes it a little bit easier. That okay. It doesn't, so put the one hand uh, under it and then bow it a little bit. Yeah, that way it kind of makes a little hump and then it's easier to kind of slice it off. Yeah. yeah. We want to get it down to the protein because as you apply the rub, we want to set the bark and the bark sets better when the rub is actually touching the protein surface versus touching the fat because as you cook the brisket, as the fat melts off, the rub's gonna fall off and your meat will not have a lot of flavor in that particular area. For the most part, when you buy beef, I like to buy the highest grade possible. Cook with prime if you can. If you cannot find prime, cook choice. And you can see a lot of oxidation here. Yep. So we wanna all gently that comes shave off. off all the oxygen. Now, people always ask, can you cook 
with the oxidized part? The answer is yes, but I just prefer to trim it off. Go ahead and flip it over and work on the other side a little bit. All right. You notice how this brisket is curved towards the left. Right. So that means that it sits on the right breast. So okay. this is a right brisket. So in, uh, in Kentucky, do you have any advice on which brisket is more tender, to the left or the right? Uh, <laughs> shoot. So I've heard this before. So cows mill around to the left, I think. So is, is the theory that the right brisket gets less work and so is more tender? I have to take your word for it because uh, I've tasted the left and the right and I can't tell the difference. Yeah, me either. So for those of you out there who have more to say, leave the, those in the comments on Jeremy's channel and let us know what you think. Is the left boob or the right boob more tender? <laughs> all, right. all right. What we're going to do is, if you can, on the point muscle, remove all the fat carefully. Okay. And then what about this? This Take it com off? comes up. It comes okay. off. Yeah. All right. So Jeremy's going to remove all of the fat of the point muscle. This feels take so it down, strange. Take it down to the meat. Feels so strange to me. Strange to, to remove all the fat. Yes. Yeah. And that's a specific reason, and it'll be clear as the journey of Jeremy Yoder cooking Slap Your Daddy competition brisket unveils itself. I'm going to show him the exact steps I've used to win many, many first place brisket contests. So weird. It'll be even more weird when I ask you to trim all the fat between the point and the flat. Gah. This feels wrong. <laughs> I feel like I need to apologize. Yeah, you can say, say uh, sorry to the brisket. Yeah, go confess to a uh, priest or the, something. Uh, you probably need new gloves. <laughs> oh. Some, somebody's gonna oh, say man. that. Yeah. <laughs> Look at the guy, he's trimming with, you know, torn gloves. What's the matter? Well, actually... Do you have uh, those, uh, what I call, the food safety trolls on your channel? Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, actually though, um, raw meat, you can you can touch with yes. your bare hand yeah. because it's gonna be cooked, yes. mm -hmm. right? So ready to eat food, you're yeah. supposed to wear gloves. I get all kinds of trolls on the internet. I, oh, trolls just, on the internet? No yes. way! All right, so the next step is, is, first step, he got all the fat off the flat. Now he got all the fat off the point. Now he's going to remove all the fat between the point and the flat right here. So go ahead and flip it over. Okay. And then if you can, gently kind of work your way underneath and remove this fat layer. Do you separate them? Uh, we don't separate them, but we're going to gently, slowly remove the layer. Uh, just be careful, just gently, just gently, not too deep. Now. Just cut slowly and st okay. start to remove the, the fat. Just cut it out? Uh, you're going to gently cut it out. Yeah, gently. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Try not to nick the meat, but just keep going. Okay. So you're going to go like a kind of V. You're going to make a divot and slowly work your way. Yeah. And then an okay. uh, e easy way will be, if you can, right? Just, just lift this up, right? And then okay. make make a cut like like through here. You can okay. see where, where, where you're separating. So go ahead and separate it and then clean it up. So gently, yeah, run your knife gently. Without cutting the meat, but just cutting into the middle of the fat. Yeah, that's perfect. Doing a good job. Okay. Keep going. All the way. More. More. Another two, three inches in. Yeah. Just the fat. Yeah, just the fat. Okay, a little bit more. Another inch. Okay, that's good. Okay, cool. Okay, now go ahead and clean this part up and clean this part up. So, the folks, you're not going to do this unless you're cooking a competition brisket <laughs> because this is not the proper way to cook a backyard or a home brisket. But this is purely pedal to the metal competition trimming techniques. <laughs> So we're going to clean up both sides. Here. We're going to clean up both sides. Uh, and there is a reason why we do that. What we want to try to do is establish something called the bark. And uh, when you turn in your burn ends, which is the point muscle in competition presentation boxes, you really want the crust to be on both sides. So if we don't do this, right, you're going to get only the bark where the flavor is only on one side. So this is a kind of a way to get bark on both sides and you know you can actually try this in home cooking and it's also fine because that way you get maximum flavor to create those little cubes of beef heaven called burnt ends beef heaven beef heaven called burnt ends yes and the idea is that uh, if you don't do this you're gonna get only flavor on one side which is also great but this way you get flavor on both sides so it's all about maximizing flavor yeah, so uh, in a competition judging, uh, essentially 24 strangers will eat your food in a double blind setting. So okay. you're given a box number, say you're given team number, box number 10. When you put your meat in box number 10 and you take it to the officials in the judging tent, the officials will immediately put a new number on your box. So box number 10 becomes box 423. 
That box is given to six strangers who sit around the table and judge you based on three criteria. Appearance, taste, and tenderness. And you are allowed up to nine points. Nine means excellent, one means it's really, really bad. The scores are also average in the sense that the appearance score is worth weight-wise equivalent to say a five pound dumbbell. The taste is awarded a 25 pound dumbbell and then the tenderness is awarded a 15 pound dumbbell. So if you do the math, appearance doesn't really matter that much in competition. However, the overall taste score is the one that wins or loses contest. So what is interesting about competition barbecue is double blind. So the judges never see you, you never see the judges. So when you walk on stage at the end of the day and you take home the grand champion prize, that's because 24 strangers judge your four meat categories the best for that day. Now, I don't say that any of my barbecue is any good, but the techniques that I've done are different than home cooking because they are optimized to win contests. So it's essentially what we call a one bite wonder. It's heavily seasoned, heavily salted. And honestly, I wouldn't eat a competition entry as something I would serve my family. But for competition, we cook to win with a one bite wonder about one ounce per serving because that's what the amount of food the judges will actually eat and score your entry. So you notice how it's lumpy. Mm -hmm. So if I cut cubes or burn ends, the cubes will be lumpy. It will not be a beautiful symmetric cube. Got it. Right now. So here's a little black belt tip. Looking at the fat marbling on this side versus this side, which one is more marble? Uh, the underside. Okay, this side? I think so. And or this side. Mm -hmm. that, that has less marbling. Yeah. Am I correct? So what we're going to do is show you a black belt tip. Okay. We actually shave down the point okay. so that we can get a tabletop that's even on both sides so that later on after the brisket is cooked, we can create beautiful symmetrical cubes. Okay. So because this side is more fatty, we don't want to shave from the side that's more fatty. We shave from the side that is less fatty. Okay. okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to flip this over like so and you're going to take your best shot at shaving this down so that you create a flat surface to create some area here where we can cut beautiful cubes of burnings. So if you can just try to shave it so that you have an even tabletop and All shave right. off any, any high spots. So you can try to get in and like a, make the bottom layer and the top layer parallel, like a par okay. parallelogram or trapezoid, whatever. So, wait, Jeremy Yoda is a math teacher. So what, what is the shape that the two sides are parallel? Trapezoid? So parallelogram is two sets of parallel lines. Okay. So that's, that's one of so them. So like a square is a parallelogram, but mm -hmm. um, a parallelogram isn't necessarily a square. Okay. So yeah. in this case, we have an odd shape. So it's a trapezoidal yeah. something? Something, something like that, yeah. So okay. trapezoidal is um, one set okay. of parallel lines. All right. So for those of you math majors out there, you can comment in the description below what Jeremy is doing. Is it a trapezoid? Is it a parallelogram, blah, blah, blah? Or is it a <laughs> rectangle? So what he's doing is all he's doing is shaving it down so it looks kind of parallel. So when we finish cooking, we can cut beautiful cubes. We need seven cubes for a box. Seven cubes. Yeah, so you figure we can get seven cubes? I think we can, right? I think so. Yeah, so maybe just a little bit more on this edge. Right Turn there. Open, yeah. Okay, that's perfect. So now we focus on getting the burn ends from here. Right? Let's go ahead and flip it over. All right. So now we have to basically look at this thing, right? And you notice that if we cook it this way, this piece sits on this piece, right? Yep. So this is not good because this will cause less bark. Got it. So we're going to basically trim this piece off around here like that. Okay. So, so there's just, a lot of waste take this and off. that's almost criminal. Yes. Uh -huh. But okay. this is meant for to win a contest. It's not meant for eating. Right. Cool. So that's, you save that for beef stew. So yeah. looking now at the brisket, you can see that the money muscle or the slices for the competition box will come around here. Okay. So this is really a little triangle, too narrow. So if you want to trim this piece out like that, maybe a little 30 degree angle. So something like this, do you round uh, it or no? Uh, you can go round or I just cut straight. So if you can cut this way, 30 degree down this way. Like okay. That. Okay. Got it. So a little bit of aerodynamic airflow. So the crust, okay. okay. All right. Now, this piece here is too thin, so yep. if you want to cut up this way around here, like that. Okay. The same at an same angle? Same 30, 30 degree angle going in. Okay. So. Alright, if you want a little bit of aerodynamic airflow and have the 
smoke ring be very even. You can go ahead and shave this so that it's curved, so there's no sharp edges here okay. to dry out. So you just gently kind of round it. Okay. And this is where you need a nice, a nice sharp knife to kind of round things up. That's good. Same here, okay. this part here, and same here to round it up. So when we okay. cut the slices, it's going to be absolutely perfect. Got it. And we don't need to trim any more of the fat cap because we're going to trim it for the box. So you can trim it down to a half inch or quarter inch, but I don't bother because uh, I'm going to trim it for the box anyway. So I'm not going to serve the judges a lot of fat. My style is I like to serve the judges with one eighth inch of fat on the edge of the slice of the flat muscle. Mm. Okay. And you find that they like that? Uh, it's, it's another three hour argument in Jerry Springer fist fight as to whether judges like fat or not. But I just like to leave a sliver of fat because, okay. you know, when I eat brisket, I expect to see some of that fat. I don't like a super lean brisket. Right. On a competition brisket, we're optimizing for the best slices and the best burn-ins. How often do you encounter people who they're getting into barbecue and they're trying to figure out how to make a brisket or how to make ribs or how to make whatever barbecue item? and they copy a competition style recipe for like their family dinner. How often does that happen? Do you think? Uh, a lot of folks uh, like to think that competition food is really good eating and suitable for family backyard gatherings. Uh, in all honesty, uh, competition food is, has a completely different objective. It's overproduced. Okay. okay. And that's by nature, uh, primarily because when a judge eats an entry, that's a two ounce bite. Right. So a judge may have to eat six to eight entries of chicken, okay. six to eight entries of ribs, six to eight of pork, six to eight of brisket. So if you do the math, mm -hmm. two ounces a bite, multiply by eight, that's 16 ounces One pound. times four. So when was the last time you sat down and ate four pounds, four pounds of meat <laughs> in 90 minutes? So being a judge is not that easy. A lot of people think that being a barbecue judge is the best job in the world. No, you actually have to eat a lot of meat, taste a lot of salt and chemicals and you have to eat it with a poker face so you can't make a face when you're eating the food hmm. so, so you have to eat with the poker face and you have to taste it so even though it looks really bad you okay. still have to taste it so if, if a judge took a bite and they did this that would be not allowed no you are supposed to eat with the poker face so yes you're not allowed to discuss your scores until after the entry is judged so it's not that easy being a certified barbecue judge, but for those of you who like to enjoy barbecue, who want to taste competition barbecue, being a certified barbecue judge is the way to go. Go sign up on kcbs.com or your local barbecue association to find out when they are conducting mm -hmm. judging classes. If you are a competitor, I highly recommend you take a judging class before you even go to your first contest because the criteria for judging is completely different than the criteria you have when you eat barbecue at home. Right, so by taking the class, you know what the judges are looking for, so you have kind of a target that you're aiming at. For example, when you cook ribs at home, you typically want to cook it falling off the bone. Well, in competition, <laughs> you have to cook the ribs so that you take a bite, you see your teeth marks, and there's liquid on the bone that dries up within a few seconds. So that kind of a window of perfection only happens within the eight minutes of a five-hour rib cook. So if you're a backyarder, <laughs> you would not know that. So go take a competition class, judging class, and then see what is the expectation from a top competitor. Wow, wow. Very different. Cool, so this is done. We can set it aside. All right, so we have this thing trimmed up now and I see you pulled out some bags of some stuff here. What is this? For competition briskets, okay. you are trying to create flavor. Right. Obviously, you can get great flavor by cooking the meat with just a rub. Mm -hmm. But because you are trying to beat 100 teams, to first place, you have to add a little bit something special. So we use a technique called injection, which is nothing more than a marinade that mm -hmm. you put into the middle of the brisket sure. using a tool called an injector. Mm -hmm. And I have here a few of the products that we're going to mix okay. and let you inject this brisket. A lot of people ask, is it necessary to have an injection? The answer is no. Okay. But if you are trying to win a contest and a $10,000 check, this is the method I use to get maximum flavor. Okay. Completely optional for backyarders. Now, what is an injection? Injection is nothing more than a brine. Okay. And there are certain brands out there that you can buy. These are a few that I like. Some, okay. some of my buddies, this is from Darien, this is from Sterling, and this is from uh, uh, David uh, Busca. So 
Uh, what I like to try to do is I mix my injections. So that's another black belt tip okay. that I'm going to pass on to you. So if you ever enter a barbecue contest and you win the brisket entry, maybe you want to try this winning combination. Right. Uh, this was good for first place USA. So I'm just revealing the secrets. So don't tell anybody my little secret. Okay, <laughs> so nobody's going to see this. Uh, I mix the three brisket injections because I find that it gives a good flavor. Okay, so we're going to so, put some water in it. All right. And you're going to put about maybe 10 to 12 ounces of water. Kind of eyeball it. So a cup and a half approximately. Okay. And let me get the lid so you can shake this. All right. Does that look about right? That's about right. Yes. And so in here we have, well, obviously salt. And then we have what? Some phosphates for water retention or? Yes. So um, let me have Jeremy explain what he's doing because he's a science guy and uh, this contains sodium phosphate okay so phosphate uh, basically it's a phosphorus with oxygens around it right and those oxygens are going to um, have an attraction to water so they'll hold more water in something because of those phosphates excellent so the phosphate is a plumping and moisturizing agent mm -hmm. to that there's going to be salt also three flavor enhancers the first one is MSG. <laughs> is it? Is Uncle Roger watching this episode? The king of flavor. <laughs> so, Uncle Roger, if you're watching this episode, <laughs> I need to do a throwdown with some fried rice with you. There but you absolutely right. So, monosodium glutamate is a glutamic acid combined with sodium chloride. And what happens is that gives you flavor. Mm -hmm. So, your tongue has receptors for MSG. So, that's one product that's in here. The second product in here is called disodium inosinate or sodium inosinate, depending on how you want to say it. And what that does is it gives additional flavor. Okay. So that was actually synthesized from the skipjack tuna, discovered by the Japanese. Oh, okay. Okay. So similarly, MSG was discovered by Prof Professor Ikeda from the University of Tokyo. So Japanese invented <laughs> the MSG. They also discovered inosinates, and they also discovered something called guanolates, which is mm -hmm. mushrooms. So all these three products are in here in chemical form. So Jeremy's going to go shake it up. I'm going to put a little, uh, what do you call this thing? The whiskey thing. Uh, I don't know. It's a okay, protein shaker you need ball something. Thing. I'm shake a ball in here, and he's gonna do his best uh, bartender shake. Hold, hold the lid. Yeah, and he's gonna do. It. So what he's gonna do is he's gonna basically get the solids dissolved into a liquid. We have an injector here. We're gonna have Jeremy inject the brisket without squirting all over himself or onto me. So in competition, what we do is we make the injection ahead of time and we refrigerate it. So it, it works better when the injection is cold. But in today's episode, we're just going to go ahead and inject it right away. Looks like okay. it's there. I think so. Okay. okay. So it's very important that you dissolve all these granules because if you don't, the, it's going to clog your injector. Okay. okay. So what we're going to do, Jeremy, is we're going to fill it like so. Okay. Before we do that, uh, I like to apply a little bit of Vaseline. So we're going to put a bit of, you know, cow Vaseline on the plunger that will lubricate the plunger so it, it doesn't leak. So, hmm. okay. And I'm gonna just quick do a quick demo and have you inject the brisket okay. itself. And you fill it up with the injection liquid, like so. Mm -hmm. Right, you hold the barrel and then you push it gently in about at a 30 degree angle, like so. Okay, with the grain. I am, uh, this is a three hour argument in Jerry Springer fist fight. Okay. Whether you go against the grain or with the grain, I am uh, with the grain kind of guy. So we're gonna gently push it, yeah, gently push it in. Watch it swell here. Okay. Let's keep going. See, watch it swell. See it swell. So keep going. Okay, it's so now. Okay. Oh, it's easy, oozing up now. It ooze, it, inch it up by half an inch. Okay. Continue to inject. Fill it slowly, slowly, slowly. Okay. Inch it out again and fill it. Okay, that's enough. Okay, so put your finger over it so it doesn't leak. Okay. Move over a half inch. So like that? Yeah, that. You can push it in all the way and repeat the process. So you have a grid here of one inch segments and you're going to continue to fill the brisket with the liquid as much as you can. In barbecue, there are many things you can overdo. You can over smoke, over rub, over cook, but you cannot over inject because whatever excess injection is put in, you will just ooze out. And when you inject, just be a little bit mindful that you might squirt yourself in the eye because the injection will come out through the other pores of the brisket. So Jeremy's going to inject it into a grid pattern. Try to get as much of the injection in as he can. Okay. Ooh. When I compete, I actually make these injections and I freeze them because I compete every weekend. 
So mm -hmm. um, it's, it's a long journey to prepare for a contest. So the contest prep begins on Monday, continues through Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, you might get on the road. Oh. You compete Friday and Saturday and Sunday you drive home. So it is a six hour journey sometimes to compete, especially if you come from California and you compete in Kansas City, it's a long drive. So Jeremy, right, maintaining the right level of saltiness of your injection is very important. Mm -hmm. People always ask me, what's the best way to figure out how salty? Uh, you notice that when I put in the product, I didn't mm -hmm. measure it because I'm actually measuring the final taste. Mm -hmm. For those of you who have ever tasted seawater, ocean water, ocean water is about three and a half percent of salt. That means that you take about three and a half pounds of salt, dissolve in approximately 100 pounds of water. That's kind of how the concentration of ocean water is. For injections, for brisket, for competition, I find out 6% is about right. So figure about twice as salty as ocean water. So when you taste your injection, it's got to be twice as salty as ocean water. And I believe that's a good guideline if you want to get to the right level of saltiness suitable for a competition brisket. So about twice as salty as ocean water. So does that mean the final product is saltier than you would want to make a meal out of? It is going to be really salty, um, saltier than you want to eat. But that's how competition works because by the time the judges eat the brisket entry, mm -hmm. their taste buds are already burnt. So if you serve them a normally salted piece of meat, nothing is going to register and you're not going to win a contest. That's why competition food is not necessarily the best eating food to serve your family and friends. So if you're cooking at home, do you inject? No, I don't. Just for you? No, I don't. Okay. No, I don't. Uh, this TMW, too much work. Oh, I okay. like easy. Fair enough, me too. We always want to be cost efficient and process efficient, cheap and lazy method of cooking. That's why you notice on my channel, I've used my pellet cooker a lot. Yeah? Because this is too much work. Jeremy has the zen of putting in a log every 30 minutes. That means that on a normal 10 hour cook, he's out here a lot. Yeah, and uh, a lot. I just cook on my phone and monitor. Temperature. <laughs> 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 cool. So that's ready. So we move to the next phase. Okay. okay. All right. So we got this thing injected. We have it trimmed. And I'm sure we're going to put some rub on the outside. So what are we going to do for that? Uh, I brought some rubs for Jeremy here. Well, and, thank you. Uh, we're going to show you what we do. So what I do for competition is. <laughs> you have a guy with a chainsaw? Here goes. All right, let's go ahead and put the rub on and uh, we're going to use uh, the beef rub that I put out. The beef rub uh, is this one here. What I did was I added two products to the beef rub, right? So I added a little bit more pepper and a little bit more cayenne and MSG. So this version is a little bit different than this version. Uh, a lot of competitors order the competition version, which is hot with MSG. But I, you can take a regular bottle of my rub that you can buy from the store and add your own MSG and add a little bit of uh, pepper and add a little bit of cayenne. Okay, so can, can you buy this competition You can buy this version and you just uh, go to my website and order the competition version. Got which it. Which is hot with MSG. Okay, cool. so this is one contest for you. This, this has one this first place USA. Thing. Yeah, first place USA. So this is the same no big deal. product I use. Okay. okay. <laughs> All right. Okay, so uh, go ahead and apply the product on. Okay. Now, uh, the meat is wet, so we don't need to put a schmear. So you can put Worcestershire or put mustard, it's great. But go ahead and apply the rub, uh, okay. one layer until it becomes opaque. Okay, just put, do one spot first, keep going, keep going. More, more, keep going, more, more, more. Okay, let's pause. Okay, go ahead and gently pat it down, gently okay. pat it down. Okay, now use your muscle memory to do it exactly again. Okay. Okay. Same spot. Same spot. Okay, now gently pat it down. You never rub a rub, you gently pat a rub down. Okay, go ahead and proceed to the next spot. And one layer first until it's opaque. Stop, pat it down, and then one more time. And then pat it gently because you don't want to squeeze the marinade out. So you ah. want to be like a baby's bottom. Just imagine you're patting a baby's bottom. That's the way to do it. And go ahead and repeat that process evenly throughout the entire brisket. And shake it about maybe eight to ten inches. That way it goes even. And then shake the bottle so that the granules will not clump up. Okay. We always say in competition, win or lose a contest is one missing shake, one too many shakes because the product is not perfectly seasoned. And this is something that you should do a little bit carefully. In competition, I leave the injection on for eight hours. I leave the rub on for four hours before cooking. But in today's video, we're just gonna throw it on a pit but I want you guys to know it's eight and four is the magic number I use. 
This is totally foreign to me. This is so weird. I'm, like what we did to this point, like I just about had a seizure. Um, and then adding this much rub, uh, it's so weird. But I'm excited to, to see what it tastes like. I'm genuinely looking forward to this because, you know, it's, it's a different world for me. And for you to kind of open this up and let me see what this is like is super cool. Thank you. All right, so you, you think I could, I could use this method and win? Uh, many people have done so. I've trained many grand champions and uh, I've taught like in excess of 250 classes. Wow. Probably three, 4,000 students around the world. I've Amazing. taught people in London, they won. I've taught people in Australia. They, I, a lot of grand champions in Australia are my students. So uh, whatever it is, it doesn't taste good, but it works. So how did you go about coming up with this rub? Uh, I cook to win, so uh, the criteria is different because uh, what you do is you try a recipe, you take it to a contest, you have 24 strangers eat it, if they like it, you continue, if they don't like it, you change the recipes. So that's kind of how the, my recipes evolve. That's kind of how see. all these rubs evolve, they evolve to win contests. So uh, you can try it for backyard, it works too, but for competition, you seem, the judges seem to like it. Okay, go ahead and flip this up and do this side. Okay. okay. Until opaque, pack. Like a baby's bottom. So mm -hmm. Harry's baby's bottom pat technique. See, there you go. See, you learn something new every day. I see. Yeah. Okay, that's good. All right, we're going to throw in the Franklin pit and uh, we'll do a mano on mano with the other brisket that Jeremy is teaching me how to cook. Have you ever competed against Franklin? Uh, yes, I have. Uh, actually, uh, Franklin, uh, Aaron Franklin and I are old buddies. Uh, we used to be on a comp circuit, and now he's a world rock star with his restaurant. So you notice, right, how the brisket kind of is sitting right now, yep. and there are low spots. So on these low spots, right, typically you have puddling. Okay. When you have puddling, you're not going to get crust. So the trick we use is we prop the brisket up like so, with a block of wood, ah. so that we can create a beautiful crust, so that everything is going to be absolutely perfect for the judge's box. Okay, so yeah. it's, it's about presentation here. It's about getting the perfect crust on okay. the brisket in terms of your slices. I drew my inspiration from the Astrodome. When it rains, what happens? The rainwater drains off. So this mm. is a way I've used to get first place USA brisket. All right, sounds okay. like it works. Okay, let's try it. Uh, you move that a little bit. So we go flat yeah, toward the fire yeah. or point toward the fire? Uh, point that way. Okay, I have to wash my hands after this. Yeah, just drape it over. Okay. Carefully. Like that. So, yeah, cool. Okay, and then we're gonna drape this piece also through here so that you, this doesn't pull. Okay. Absolutely perfect. Okay. All right, let's close it up. All right, Jeremy, we've had the brisket in there for about seven hours and yep. we have formed the crust. So we're ready to go ahead and wrap. We have a can of beef broth here, which I'll have you open. Regular you ready? Campbell's beef broth. I have foil here set up in basically two layers and a little bolt as the third layer. Hmm. And since you have the heat gloves, we're going to have you lift the brisket and just leave it, pop it right here. I think you should just bare hand it. Bare hand the <laughs> thing, right? And, just burn uh, your fingertips off. As you lift up, uh, the wood chunks are going to be left behind. So you can leave the wood chunks behind. So that's oh, the wood chunks. One to was hold. left behind. Yeah, and then one is still stuck. So you want to remove it. And All then right. uh, show the camera the divots at the bottom, which is normal. So you're going to get two divots and that's normal. So don't worry about that. Go ahead and put that onto the foil. Okay. Okay. So uh, it's a little tip, black belt tip. We create a little boat. Go ahead and create a boat on your side. Okay. Black belt tip. Black belt tip. And that's where you can rehydrate your brisket. We have a can of beef broth. So what I want you to do is gently drizzle the beef broth and watch what happens, right? Look what okay. happens here, right? You see that absorption? Drip and let it soak. And you're going to rehydrate the brisket. That's how you get a championship brisket. Rehydrating the brisket is one of the most important steps in cooking brisket. You notice how the bark will not fall off because the bark has set. That's very Got important. It. So if you make a mistake and the bark falls off, that means that you didn't wait long enough for the bark to set. You're going to drizzle 10 ounces of beef broth onto the brisket. Okay. Let it soak and then keep continue. Soak. Camera can zoom in, you can see the, how, 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 how much is being absorbed. And so there's no need to preheat this? No, no, it's room temperature is fine. Okay, make sure you get some of the point. The point is it looks dry, so you can see it's soaking in. Yeah. Very important part of the process. Okay. So okay. you notice, Jeremy, we put it about halfway. So okay. we can fold over now and we will roll the three sides. We fold. Okay. we fold it over like so. And then go ahead and roll the edges. I'm gonna okay. roll this side for you here. And try to finish with the seam higher. 
so that he doesn't leak. So we're okay. creating an airtight cocoon. Okay, go ahead and now gently push it and make a little papoose, like airtight papoose out of it. Okay. Let's go ahead and put it into a place where we can keep it warm at 275 to continue the cooking process. Okay. All right. Are you ready to wrap a Jeremy Yoda brisket? Yoda brisket. Uh, let's right. do that. I'm surprised that Jeremy Yoda well, lasted as long as he did with Harry Sue. <laughs> well, ordeal makes it sound bad, but I had a lot of fun. I learned a ton. Like <laughs> aluminum foil on your brisket will get you disqualified. Yes. I did not know. All right. So we have both of these briskets done. Uh, neither of them rested for nearly as long as we wanted, but we got to get this done in one day, so we're going to slice them up. Um, if you guys want to see how Harry did this brisket, check out the video on his channel where I kind of walk him through my process. And um, I, I think he did a really good job. I had way more to learn because I didn't teach him anything he didn't already know. So I learned a bunch of new stuff. So hopefully I didn't ruin this, but I'm ready to slice this open and see how it turned out. Absolutely. Cool. So. Ooh. The first thing you want to do is move the knife. Is move the knife. Okay. okay. And the first thing you want to do is yep. take your knife, place it at the fat layer, and yep. slice it in this way. Okay. And separate the point from the flat. Just like this. Just like that. Yes. Keep going. Keep going all the way. Yeah, I can't really see. Yeah. Just go down a little bit diagonal, thirty degree angle. Um, okay. That's good. Am I? Am I messing this yeah, yeah. up? No. Going, going down. Going down. Uh, bring the knife down. Yeah. yeah okay. Good. Okay. okay, cool. And then now you have the burn ends right here. Okay. All right. Absolutely gorgeous burn ends. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna cut your burn ends from here, like so. Yeah. All right. And we're gonna cut it into cubes, maybe about that much, yay okay. much on the cutting board. And this is a really nice knife. What what kind of knife is this, Jeremy? This is a prototype knife. Okay. But more on that later. I'll cut cut another strip here. Cut another oh, strip another here. one. Another one. Okay, that's about like that. Strip. Yeah, that's about right. Okay. Okay, and then now you want to see if you can cut it into cubes. Maybe you try to get some nice, even one inch cubes. Okay. And hold it, it's hot, be careful. It try to hot. cut it without damaging, uh, tearing the edge if you okay. can. Okay, like that? Yeah, 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 about right. Yeah. A little bit more of uh, square. Yeah, maybe one, yeah, that's about right. Like that? Yeah, make a cube, like a cube from the top. I'll try. Yeah, try. It's a little hot. So it's a little crumbly, and that's because it's hot. Usually we let it rest five hours, but we don't have time today. So I'm gonna trim it. Okay, that's good. And then we'll try this. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. Cool. So let's set this aside. So what we want to do is we want to place this in the jus. Okay. All right, and let it rest. Okay. And now let's go ahead and slice our brisket. And the money slice is gonna be somewhere like this, right? So you're okay. gonna take you're gonna take one slice on the left, one slice on the right. We're gonna taste the left and right slice to see which one tastes better. And that's oh. the one that goes to the judge. So this is another black belt trick. Because the brisket is not going to taste the same throughout. So I would recommend you cut a little bit. Yeah, cut, cut one slice on that side. Okay. So And then you're going to basically taste the left slice versus the right slice and pick the side that tastes better. We're going to slice it for the judging box. Black belt tip. Black belt tip, yes. So the brisket may not taste equally good. So just okay. do one on left and one on like right. Like that? Yeah. A little, bit, a little bit more to this way. Yeah, cool. Okay. okay. Go ahead and slice it. Actually, I'll do this side. Yeah. Okay, good. Now we can see that it has a beautiful drape. Like so, right? That's about perfect. A little smoke ring. You can see the smoke ring yeah. here. And uh, what you want to try to do is trim off the fat. Like so. So you leave a little bit of fat. So this piece is ready for tasting. Let's, let's take this piece out okay. now. Same idea. And we're going to trim off the fat. And so this is why you don't season the fat side. No, yeah. Got and, it. And you can see the drip. Absolutely perfect. So we're going to do a pull test. I'm going to let you do a pull test, a accordion okay. pull test, and you tell me if the tenderness is a 9 or 8 or a 7. Okay. okay. Just go ahead and like, like this, pull it apart. Oh, like this. Pull it, yeah, pull it apart okay. for texture. Okay. Okay, that's perfect. Okay, right, so I that will be that's great. That will be a 9. Okay, now pull this side. Okay. Okay, which one you like better? That one. That one? Okay, cool. Now that is called the tenderness test. Now you got to do the taste test. So taste this piece versus this piece okay. and tell me which piece, which side you like better. Okay. Go ahead. I'll, I'll join you here. I'll taste the right hand side first. I don't know, man. That tastes really good. Left or right? Which one tastes better? Um, I think I just tried that one. Let me okay. try this. Yeah. 
Try yeah. this one in the middle, yeah. Just take the middle piece. Left or right? Which one tastes better? Remember I told you the taste is worth a 25 pound dumbbell. Mm -hmm. The tenderness is worth 15, the appearance is worth five. So we are gonna bias it on taste. Okay. I like the tenderness mm -hmm. of this one better. Mm -hmm. I like the taste of that one. Good. So now mathematically, right, you know that the taste is weighted higher. Right. So which should you bias? Where should you start slicing for the judges? That side. That side, exactly. So I have to reach the same conclusion. This actually tastes better, but the texture is better on this side. But this is only worth 15 pounds. This is only worth 25 pounds. So let's go ahead and pretend to slice for the judging boxes starting from the left. Okay. Okay, and then you want to get pencil thick slices from the left. So like, I always slice yeah. from the opposite side. Yeah, go ahead and yeah, try it on, cut, cut it on your side. And okay. of course, it's, it's very hot right now, so obviously it's going to be crumbly, but when right. you cool it down, it'll be a little bit better. Yeah. And how many? Uh, just slice three slices, just for presentation purposes. Usually I slice seven slices. Six oh. for the judges and one for the table captain. Oh, okay. Okay. Okay, All good. Right, we got now three. you want to trim away the, the fat. So trim away the fat Look layer. at that moisture though. Yeah, it's really Ooh. moist. Okay. Okay. All okay right. Go ahead and work on the individual slices. Okay. And once you work on the slices, I'm going to dip it in the jus here. Okay. So trim, uh, leave about an eighth of an inch of fat at the base of that. So what if it's not completely even, like you have to dig in a little bit? Uh, it's fine. It's fine. Yeah. So you would, you would, I use electric knife and make a straight cut. Okay. So okay. that's good enough. Okay. Good, good enough. So let's, let's dip that in here to keep it warm. Okay. Excellent. Okay, so we have three slices now deep in the jus. So if we okay. were to plate it, right? Pretend like that's the that's the box. We're going to plate it. One. Hmm. Two. Three, four, five, six. Pretend like it's there. Right. And then what we do is we put these little pieces of burn ends at the end like that. And if you cut it into a perfect cube, you have to use a pair of scissors. So the trick is use a pair of scissors and trim it so that the edges are clean and you would have the burn ends at the end like so. Wow, that's beautiful. So that way you, the judge will see the money now, shot. Now, do you use any kind of up. dusting on this or you, not? You can add a final dusting of ground rub. So I, I grind my moolah rub and I kind of dust it on the back side. So I never dust the front side, I dust the back side so oh. they don't see it. But when they bite it and they eat the meat, they're going to be able to taste that rub which causes the flavor to pop. So if, this would be kind of what the judge sees like that, kind of like that. Okay. That is beautiful. I now understand why you've won so many competitions. I mean, okay. And, seriously uh, impressive. Of course, you can see the, be the beautiful smoke ring, and that's yeah. kind of where you want it. And that's why my rub has a few components like celery seed. Right. The celery seed has naturally occurring nitrites. So you, that gives you kind of a little enhanced smoke ring, right. which is highly desirable. Even though the judges are not allowed to score the smoke ring, we know the day you turn in a brisket without a smoke ring is not the day you're gonna win. Right, right. Now I wanna try a burn end. Absolutely, please go ahead. All right, so I'm yeah, excited about end. this. Yeah. I remember watching Barbecue Pitmasters, okay. season one, mm -hmm. and I remember dreaming about trying one of those briskets. <laughs> I get to try one of those briskets today. This is like right a lifelong here. dream for me. Cooked by Jeremy Yoda, no less, right? So <laughs> I, I, just, I was just a tour guide, so nah, he's, he's the star. Nah, let's not get carried away. I would have been totally <laughs> lost. Okay. All right, let me see. Yeah, close your eyes and let the 8,000 taste buds uh, three milliseconds chew before you chew for three mm. seconds and then swallow and light up the 8,000 taste buds. You should taste a symphony of flavor in your mouth. That's how a competition brisket entry is supposed to be. All right? You like it? Okay, he's speechless now, folks. We'll have to ad lib for him that. Wow. There are so many flavors in that. More, a little bit more complexity. So salt and pepper is no, great. No, no, no. Not a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Way more. Way more. Way more, yeah. So again, right, wow. when you're up against 150 teams, you've got to dazzle them with a little bit more complexity yeah. of the flavor. <laughs> there we go. No, so like, I think I'd want a few bites of this, two or three maybe, but I wouldn't want to make a meal out of it. But for that one bite, this is yeah. so complex, so many things going on that it's just, you know, it's like, you know, lighting everything up in your mouth. I mean, just, oh, I taste this, I taste this, yeah. I taste this. There's a little bit of spicy, there's sweet, there's mm -hmm. everything. And we call it a symphony of flavor, an explosion yeah. of a symphony of flavors. And um, uh, like you say, it's very true. It's good for one or two this bites. This is a Beethoven or brisket. Yes. And a couple wow. of bites are good, but I'm not probably going to eat a whole brisket mm -hmm. anyway. The, you have to try this. This is so <laughs> much Erica, flavor. Uh, we have to have our camera person working so hard behind the scenes, right? It's so good. So it's a little bit different than mm -hmm. the salt pepper, but all, all's good. Try the flat now. Yeah. Try this. 
That texture, I think, is good. I think so, yeah. It's, it's perfect. It, I, if I were a judge, and I'm a my certified judge, I would give that a 9 on the, yeah. on the texture. Try this. Wow. Right. How is the flat moist? <laughs> well, injections, lots of care. <laughs> TLC, love from Jeremy. Mm. <laughs> wow. Okay. So you now had a chance to taste what the differences in technique are. As I say, there's no good and there's no bad. It's just your preference. No, you sandbagged this. You told me that this is not really an edible brisket. It's it, very salty. Isn't it, it? Isn't it very salty? It's a salty, but Erica, very I was salty. expecting it to be like, oh, that's interesting, but not good. This is great. Yeah, it, it's really salty. It's, <laughs> At it's least very to me. salty. I mean, you wouldn't want to sit down and make a meal, mm -hmm. but in terms of packing the most possible flavor into a single bite, mm -hmm. like. Yeah, if you're judging a contest and you had to give numbers, then you would give a number corresponding to the punch that you felt. You got sucked between the eyeballs. <laughs> wow. Very impressive. Okay. Thank you so much. All right, Jeremy, always a pleasure. Let's go ahead and slice this one now, which is the Jeremy Yoda, Let's Yoda brisket. So using the eight wood chunks on charcoal in a Weber Smoky Mountain, you've won world championships. I've won first place in some national championship, yes. Okay, national championship. Mm -hmm. Only national, guys. Only national. <laughs> just the best in the country. No big deal. About 7,000 teams, yes. Okay, oh, just, just the best of 7,000. So I really appreciate you... You know, taking the time to teach me this, this is something that's totally foreign to me, something, I, you know, totally not in my wheelhouse. I know that this is something you've done before, the low, slow, salt, pepper, keep it simple, all that. Mm -hmm. um, but I've learned a ton, and I want to really honestly tell you thank you so much. This has been a privilege to, to learn from somebody with as much experience and as much know-how as you have. So. Jeremy, it's been a pleasure hanging out with you here, and thank you for being such a gracious host. I had, had a fabulous time. Oh, well, that's great to hear. Great to hear. If you guys enjoyed the video, you can hit the like button down below. You can subscribe to Mad Scientist Barbecue, or you can subscribe. <sighs> Struggling. Try it again. He's OM by the brisket flavor. Yeah. <laughs> if you guys enjoyed the video, you can. It's, okay. it's getting it's getting worse. He's, no, the fine. MSG, the MSG, Uncle Roger, Uncle Roger, the MSG is getting him. Cling of flavor. Cling of flavor. If you guys enjoyed the video, you can hit the like button down below, and you can also subscribe to my channel and Harry's channel. If you guys want to get some of the best barbecue information out there, make sure you check out Harry's channel. It is top-notch stuff. He is very systematic and scientific in how he approaches barbecue. So if people want to follow you, what's your Instagram? What's your YouTube channel name? Where can they find you? All right, look for at Slap Your Daddy BBQ on Instagram, Facebook, and check out my YouTube channel, Harry Sue. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you guys next time. See you guys next time.